Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon and good evening, depending where you are in the world for this session, to listen to Mike and Ian from Xylem. They're going to be talking about digital water and large amateur leak detection. So with that, I'll hand it straight across to, to Mike, who's going to start the presentation. So off you go, Mike. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Good morning. I'll just say a quick hello from from my side and thanks Stuart for, for muting everybody. Um, and I'm just gonna say hello, Mike Rigglesworth is my name. I'm based here in Canada and uh, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague Ian Rogers who will be, uh, be starting off the first part of the session. So thanks everyone for joining. Okay, thank you, Mike. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about large diameter pipes and the value of doing leak detection. Um, on them. So this is a, a continuation from the, the great webinars that the IWA have been putting on over the last few months during this pandemic, where there's been talk of metering on large pipes and customers, how to do DMAs, network management, pressure management, leak detection. And also there was one in June to do with uh, hidden revenue from your customer metering. But say today it's, it's the big pipes. So we all recognize the table uh, on the left. This is the, the normal IWA table. Uh, and so we're gonna focus on the leak detection of the transmission mains, which forms a, a very, or can form a very large part of the non-revenue water for a complete network. We talk about leak detection, but leak detection also uh, plays a part of the asset management because we're gathering data on the condition of the pipeline today which allows us to take informed engineering decisions on what needs to be done and when those activities need to be done. And it also forms part of a proactive uh, leak detection management system. So, one too many. So leak detection uh, not only reduces the loss of water, uh, but it also, reduces the risk of catastrophic uh, failures. So leaks on large pipes um, often lead eventually to large failures um, because a small leak will only do one thing which become bigger and bigger and ultimately it can become a failure. And as we said that you no know, non-revenue water, uh, a good proportion of that can be due to the transmission pipelines. And this is what happens if you don't do proactive or, um, leak detection or, or management. You, you will get bursts at the worst possible time at the worst possible location. So what are some of the drivers that, that push utilities to doing leak detection on their pipelines, the big pipelines? Well, one is during the commissioning phase. So when a new pipeline is laid or a pipeline is repaired, it's very important that there are no leaks on that pipe right from the start. Any small leaks at the start will only get worse and shorten the life of pipe. Obviously the real losses, um, no leakage, part of the real losses, transmission pipelines often forgotten. People focus on DMAs with their monitoring platforms or sensors, but you no know, transmission pipelines need to be considered. The condition, if a, if a transmission pipeline fails, it impacts on a much larger number of customers compared to a distribution main. So we need to understand the, the pipeline condition today and its likely condition in a number of years down the line. If we understand the pipeline condition, we can help mitigate risks and help prevent failures. Because we know the condition of the pipe, we can also help prioritize capital replacement or repair schemes and improve the capital planning. And as a reactive measure, we might see a depression in the ground, a pool of water, a sinkhole that wasn't there yesterday or the day before. Something has changed and we need to understand what that is. So the leak detection can move from being from proactive where you're planning to reactive because you've seen a change in the way the ground looks. 
And there are four steps to this total network management process. But today, Mike and I, we're going to focus on the assessment part of it. You know, what inspection tools are out there for your pipelines? What type of analysis and what results you will get from it? And how you can use that data for your risk evaluation and better project planning. And there are three levels of effort associated with this pipeline. There is no one single silver bullet that will give you all of the information that you need. So at a starting point, we could do a health check where we're looking at the history of the pipeline. We're looking for where the failures have been. We're looking to assess the, the valves. Do they work? Do they not work? Uh, which obviously they can have an impact when you're coming to do repair work. Look at doing an external leak detection look inside the chambers, traverse the pipeline. Relatively inexpensive, relatively easy to do. But then we need to take it to the next level. We need to screen the pipelines. So at this point, we need to start looking at transient pressure monitoring. We need to start looking for, is there water hammer events? And we all know that water hammer, if it's significant and continuous, really weakens and shortens the life of the pipe water hammer will lead to leaks and bursts. So we need to identify if they exist. If they do, we can help mitigate measures to reduce those. We also need to start looking at doing inline leak detection, you know, whether that's free swimming or tethered. This is starting to build up that knowledge of what the pipeline condition is and where are the problems. And the third level, is we start to add in the pipe wall assessment. So we're starting to look for the leaks of the future. Where do we have corrosion? Where do we have broken wires if it's bar wraps or pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipes? And ultimately what we can do then is with all of this information is we can start to look at what is the remaining useful life of the pipe. So if we can do these three steps, we've got a much higher confidence in the status of the pipe, we know where we need to replace or repair. We can help define the reinspection plans and we can help better identify the capital planning and the budgeting requirements. So what are the challenges that we face with big pipes? Now, big pipes are different. You know, if a big pipe fails, it impacts on a very large number of customers. If a distribution pipe fails, you, know, you can revalve and limit the interruption to the number of customers. They're a higher risk and they have a much higher replacement value. They are physically bigger assets. They cost more. It takes more effort to do a repair. Each piece is unique. Different materials, different contractors have laid the pipe, uh, different ground conditions, different operating conditions. If there is a leak, we need to be very precise on where that leak is. You know, when we say dig here, we really want to get you on top of where that leak is. Minimize disruption, uh, reduce the amount of time it takes to do the work and keep the repair cost down. We said it before and we'll keep saying it. Small leaks will eventually lead to failures. It's absolutely imperative that we find the small leaks on, these, on the big pipes. Big contribution to non-revenue water. There may physically be fewer leaks, but the volume of that loss can still be very, very high. Now, when it comes to the leak detection, there are a number of factors that we need to take into account um, for the sensitivity and the most suitable technique. And there are five. So pressure differential. Now, what's the pressure inside the pipe versus outside the pipe? Pipes ideally are operated at the lowest possible pressure. So you need a solution that can work in pressures of down to one bar. The size of the leak, that will impact on the acoustic energy that is generated at that leak. The same goes with the shape. Different shapes will generate different types of acoustic energy. How close can we actually place the acoustic sensors apart on the pipeline? In a distribution, you've got house connections, you may have valves every 100 meters. Transmission pipelines, that is most definitely not the case. There could be kilometers between access points. 
And lastly, the material. Rigid pipes like carbon steel, ductile iron, they're very rigid. They convey the noise very nicely. But plastic pipes, GRE, flexible, which means the noise doesn't travel as far. And that's really shown here. And this is from the IWA themselves. And this is their recommendations for what leak detection technique is best suited for pipe diameter and pipe material. And we can clearly see that any pipe above 450 mil, when it's non-metallic, IWA recommend tethered and free swimming is the most effective solutions out there to do leak detection. When you get above 800 mil on metallic, again, it's tethered and free swimming. So, and that's the space that we operate in. And this is what Mike will be talking about later on. I think Ian, uh, just to highlight uh, something there, I think that's because uh, a major factor is because we're actually putting the sensors inside the pipe. So the space from the sensor to the leak is just the pipe diameter itself. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's the main reason to, to enable that sensitivity. I mean, what we're, we're not actually saying that we are, that the, the free swimming and tethered is the only solution. Far from that, you know. The, the ground microphones, the correlators, the satellites, they, they are still relevant uh, and applicable leak detection solutions. But there's a combination. You, it's the level of effort that you can go into to conduct these exercises, but also the level of confidence, to, you know, the, that confidence that, that all of the leaks are being detected. So other solutions will still find leaks, but they may not find all of them, um, especially on the larger pipes. So to have that better confidence that you've found all of the leaks, even down to the pinholes, yes, you need to put more effort into it, but the value you get back from that extra effort pays off in terms of, in terms of return on investment when you use the free swimming and tethered solutions. And this was found true in a, project, in a study in a project that we did over in Malaysia uh, that we found, or the client found that the inline tools were finding four times more leaks than traditional solutions such as correlators. So it, this reinforces what the IWA have, have been saying that for big pipes, you need big pipe solutions, which is your, your tethered and your inline solutions. And the importance and, and the real big benefit of these inline solutions follows on from what Mike just said, that these solutions work by moving the hydrophone and the acoustic sensor through the pipe and past all of these leaks and air pockets. The way I describe this is if you walk into an office, you can hear lots of noise, but you don't necessarily know where that noise is coming from, who is doing the talking. If you walk through the office, you can pinpoint who's talking on the phone and who's not and where that noise is coming from. And that's exactly what the solutions that we have do. We are moving the, the solution through the pipe. So we will find those pinhole leaks you know, down to one bar pressure. We will find the cracks and we will find the joints. We find those leaks that allows us to know how many they are, whether it's better then to do a repair or a replacement and when to do the next repeat um, survey. And my last slide um, before I hand over to Mike, geographically, these solutions have been used across the world. So the pipe material doesn't matter. The pipe depth doesn't matter. It works from the Americas all the way down to the Oceanias and all points of the compass between. So that, that's really set the scene of you know, the big pipes, what, what the problems are fa that are faced if the if surveys are not done and what techniques are required to help survey them. So now I'm going to hand over to Mike, who will go through the solutions that Xylem has, along with some case studies. So over to you, Mike. Cheers, Ian. Thanks.
So I think I've taken control of my computer again now. Hopefully you can't do anything else. So thanks for that. Um, and um, yeah, just to follow up what you were saying there. Yeah, indeed. You know, the, these are these are solutions that have been around for for a long time. You know, Sahara uh, has been was invented by WRC in the UK in 1999. So it's uh, certainly well proven and um, uh, used around the world, as Ian said. And, and Smartball been around since 2005. So. These have collectively inspected thousands of kilometers of, of large diameter pipe. And, you know, large for us, uh, we're talking, you know, 300 millimeters is, is, is on the low end for, for these pipe for large, but really there's no maximum. You know, we're, we're uh, these, these tools are, uh, they both work for any uh, large diameter, uh, any material. So this can go up, you know, one, two, three meter diameter pipe. And as long as it's pressurized, uh, these solutions are not applicable for gravity systems, um, such as gravity sewer systems. Uh, these, these only work based on the acoustics, um, as Ian was mentioning before. So if there's no pressure, then there's no sound for that leak. Um, uh, but as we'll see, uh, yeah, they have, a, they have a lot of capabilities here. Um, so smart ball, uh, this is, this is what we call a free swimming uh, inspection platform. So in this case, we actually insert a ball that rolls inside a pipeline. And so we insert it in while the pipe is in operation is a, a live insertion. So there's no shutdown, no depressurization, but you insert the ball into the pipe uh, through a 100 millimeter valve and it rolls with the flow of the water um, or wastewater. Um, and it could go many, many kilometers. So you know, typically we're doing five, 10, or even 50 kilometers in, in a single inspection. And these are specifically, the smart ball is specific designed for these long transmission mains. Um, so it's not great for a, for an, a complex uh, city network um, um, because the ball will go with the flow. So, but it will go a long distance, roll along, and it listens for the sound of the leak. So as it rolls along, it simply hears that that hissing sound of the leak, and it uh, uh, we detect the location. So, as it rolls to the end, it goes you know around corners, around ninety degree bends, up hills, down hills, through butterfly valves, and we eventually catch it at the end into a, in a net. Again, this all happens while things are live. There's lots of videos on, on the internet for this, so I'm not going to play a video here today. Uh, but certainly, do a search for Smart Ball on, on online there, and you'll you'll find the videos. Um, again, this works for anything 300 millimeters and up. Um, uh, you know, it is possible to do something smaller, but typically we're looking at larger pipes and, um, yeah, you need some way of inserting it into that pipeline. So typically through a 100 millimeter valve and it's very sensitive. So we're listening, to, we hear these, these pinhole leaks, um, uh, at, at higher pressures, we're hearing very, very, very small leaks, um, and we can locate the leak within one or plus or minus one or two meters. Uh, we're tracking the position of the ball as it goes along. So we are able to locate the, the ball as it's moving through the pipeline. And uh, after the inspection is complete, we can locate the leaks. Um, you know, it's been around for a long time. So, you know, some people say, oh, this is an old technology. Uh, why are we still using it? But you know, smart ball has had a lot of developments over the years. Um, in addition to just hearing the leak, um, it's really important to be able to accurately locate it. So we've done a lot of developments that help with uh, locating the leak if it's on a joint or on the barrel of the pipe. And there's actually a gyroscope inside the ball now too. So you can actually map the pipeline as you're doing this leak detection inspection. So it's really, there's a, a lot of advancements and um, really allows a lot of precision um, for, the, for, for the inspection uh, while it's happening. So again, leaks and gas pockets on any pipe material. Um, when the ball is inside the pipe, it doesn't matter, it doesn't care uh, if it's a plastic pipe or a steel pipe, it operates the exact same way. Um, on to Sahara. So Sahara is the same idea where you're putting, a, again, an acoustic sensor inside the pipe um, and it, it goes with the flow of the water. So again, you need pressure, you need flow. If the pressure and flow is not happening, then the tools are not moving through the pipe. So in this case, Sahara is actually attached to a, to a cable. So it gets inserted into the pipeline while it's under pressure. And the cable uh, goes into the pipe with the help of a parachute. Now, 
at the end of the parachute, there's the acoustic sensor, but also a CCTV video. So we can see what's happening inside the pipeline at the same time that we're doing the leak detection inspection. So this tool um, has, has been well used across, across Asia um, and uh, very effective, especially in, in urban environments. So where smart ball is very effective for the long distances, it can go, you know, again, 10, 20, 30 kilometers a day. Sahara is more like, you know, uh, 800 meters a day, one kilometer a day. Uh, we can go up to 1.5 kilometers, but typically the inspections per day are, are, are seven or 800 meters. And so that allows full control of the tool, um, which is great. So if you have some unknown connections, you can stop and, and see valves inside the pipe and then pull back, but it does require regular um, insertion points. So they have sort of advantages and disadvantages um, to each system. Again, Sahara, very good for complex networks or if you want to see what's going on, uh, SmartBall is better for these, these longer runs. Um, but also you can see here, the other difference with Sahara is it's, uh, it's, it's real time reporting. So SmartBall, you know, uh, we have to analyze the data after it comes out and you know, uh, we can find the big leaks in, the in one or two days but a report, a final report is usually within two or three weeks. Whereas Sahara, when you hear a leak, you stop, you can see the Sahara locator there, this person actually following the, the sensor in the pipe, X marks the spot, they immediately can find the leak uh, on the spot and, and enable an immediate excavation repair. So, but uh, that, that's great for immediate reaction, but you can also use this tool to help map the pipeline. So if the GIS records are not up to date, since you're following the, the sensor as it goes to the pipe, you can very accurately map where the pipeline is going. So you're mapping the pipe, you're doing the leak detection inspection, you've got CCTV. So there's, there's a lot going on here um, in, in the pipeline. This one requires only a 50 millimeter access point instead of the smart ball, which is 100 millimeter. Again, this has been around for about, about 20 years now. So um, I think it's a, a well-proven tool in a lot of different places. Um, there are, again, there's videos for this online. So if you search for Sahara, you can, uh, you can easily find some videos. Uh, it does have some limitations with respect to daily distances and, and bends, uh, but very, very accurate for very small leaks. Um, and you can find that accuracy, location accuracy within, you know, less than a meter. So it really enables, you know, you can imagine in the middle of a, a an urban uh, system with lots of roads around, you need to be very precise. So this allows to be um, very, very accurate with, with, with the results. So both tools, again, they enable the detection of, of small leaks, big leaks inside these big pipes, regardless of the, of the material. Spend a bit of time on um, some case studies here. This is a case study from Asia, and this is, you know, very often, as uh, I'm sure a lot of you know, where, the, where you see the water is not necessarily where where the leak is, so some you know, water water travel. So this is a case where we're able to find very accurately uh, the, the the location of, of, of the leak. I'm hoping um, I'm hoping I can get uh, yeah, share computer sound. Here we go. I'm just going to share if you can hear here. I'm going to play the sound of a leak. That's actually what we're. That's actually what the sound where the the, the 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 tool listens to, and you can see that that sound matches the the uh, the the uh, frequency spectrum you see here, and it gets louder. The sound of the leak actually gets louder as you approach the location and and gets quieter as you move away. So, uh, because uh, you know the tools are inside the pipe, we are often hearing the sound of the leak from from hundreds of meters away. Um, and we can hear the sound of that, that leak um, um, uh, very far away. Just uh, I see a question here, here live. How does it differentiate between leakage and the service connection? It, it's a good question. If a service connection um, is, is open, um, it, it, it sometimes would hear that, but we're actually hearing the pressure differential of, of, the, of, the, of the water leaving the pipeline. So actually, if the connection is not leaking, um, 
then we probably won't actually hear it because the sound of that energy dissipation would be would be further down the service connection itself. So, and typically the leak signature uh, on on a pipeline is is as a very specific signature. It's a it's a, a high high pitch, uh, high energy uh, uh, sound. If there is a if we we do often find leaks on features like air valves and and, and so on, uh, we do often find those 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 leaks in those features. Um, now, one of the things we're doing ahead of time with any of these inspections is actually going along and doing a pre-survey and pre-planning. So we're taking the GIS information uh, that exists from the pipeline. We've done some site surveys already. So even before the inspection, we know that the uh, location of any air valves and any connections and so on. So if we hear a leak and it lines up with a the connection, then we would say in our report that that leak is possibly due to that connection. Uh, many times air valves are found to be leaking and connections are found to be leaking. So again, it's, um, it's a very, a very important, uh, a very important uh, piece of the inspection because sometimes those leaks are near a connection and not at the connection. So again, that comes to the precision of the tool and we can be very accurate within a couple meters of, of, of the leak. So uh, moving on, this is another one from, from in Europe actually. So this is, this is an example of, of leak detection in a, in a region where you know, water is very cheap actually. And, you know, it's not so much a, an NRW discussion as a matter of saving water. They have a lot of water here, but what was happening was the pipe was failing regularly. And so they want to do an inspection on this pipe to, to see what was going on. They're expecting two or three leaks, but on this five kilometer pipeline um, that changed, by the way, it changed diameters between 600 and 800 millimeters and changed from steel to cast iron. And Smartball was able to roll through all of this and collect data along the whole way. They found 17 leaks, so it was quite a quite a surprise for the for the customer uh, to find to find this. And here you can see, uh, you know, 17 leaks, and all leaks they're all different. You have small leaks, you have big leaks. Sometimes you have two leaks right beside each other. Again, this shows the the the, the precision of the tool to find these these pinhole, these very very small leaks, but also these big huge ones. And so this will allow the customer to, um, in this case, prioritize which leaks they would repair first um, because they can look at where they're located. And, you know, if the big one, if it's a really big leak, then you might re respond to that quickly. Um, so quite an interesting project. Um, again, this is just for pe failure prevention. So they know that the pipes will leak before they fail. Very valuable, very valuable inspection. So those are sort of uh, two types. The third type of pro. This is a big leak detection program. This is one where we inspecting over 1,200 kilometers of, of pipe over a few years, and you know hundreds of a uh, couple hundred leaks found, and 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 huge huge savings, um, uh, huge savings, uh, small leaks, medium leaks, large leaks, and uh, here we are. There's 269 leaks detected, and only 18 were visible. So we always hear, well, it's a big pipe we'll see the leak, um, but it's, it's not the case. A very, very small percentage of leaks that we detect are actually visible from the surface. So these big pipeline systems, um, you know, they're carrying a lot of water. Um, so, but at the same time, they can be very deep. Um, it can be in sandy soils and so on. I think the other thing interesting um, is that we often hear that the flow or the pressure uh, monitoring systems, the SCADA systems, well, we'll know if we have a leak. But when you have such a large diameter pipe, you know, one meter, two meter diameter pipe, the accuracy of those sensors to detect small leaks in between them is not sufficient to find, to find, uh, to find these small leaks. So um, this is an example of a, of a sort of a longer term program and also a place where a lot of leaks were actually found nearby the chambers um, and the joints were, were, were being affected. A lot of leaks in the joints here. So this was able to actually impact the, the future design and, and uh, installation uh, methodologies for the customer. Um, so those were sort of on the, on the free swimming side. Here's an example of a, of a, of a tethered uh, program. Um, this is one that's actually sort of ongoing on uh, every year or two. And in, in this particular uh, two year program, uh, 25 kilometers, about 22 leaks were located. So this is, Pretty close. We usually say about one leak per kilometer is sort of a, a good average, good rule of thumb. It depends a lot on 
on the pipe material. You know, cast iron leaks probably the most. Um, it's a little bit different everywhere, but um, you know, again, whether it's cast iron or ductile iron or, or steel, I, I see a question coming up now. Um, the technology is not sensitive to pipe material at all. So, but we do find that some materials do leak more than others. And here, yeah, again, about one leak per kilometer. This is really, uh, again, very, very precise uh, location uh, within five centimeters of actual location with, with the inline, with the, the tether tool. So yeah, Sahara is able to mark right on the spot on the same day where the, where the leak is. So, you know, huge, saving, huge savings, you know, 350,000 cubic meters of water saved per year um, using this program and, and, it, and it's ongoing on an annual basis. And I think this is another sort of interesting one. It's a bit more, uh, again, a bit more targeted. This is an older pipe. So here's an example of, of sort of a, how Sahara might fit into a condition assessment program. This is an 80 year old pipe. You know, uh, what do you do with old infrastructure? Uh, one option is just to replace the entire pipeline. Um, but many times that's not necessary. But in this case, this is an 80 year old pipe. And the Sahara tool actually in this case was able to find, you know, over nine leaks in that, in that 1.3 kilometer survey. So with nine leaks uh, on the pipeline in such a short distance, you might actually consider, um, you might actually uh, con consider uh, actually uh, replacing it at that stage. Um, and, you know, and again, this is a larger diameter pipe. So the external tools did struggle. You'll find large leaks for sure. Um, but the small ones uh, are, are more uh, require the inline tools. So we often get a question, you know, sometimes you go through all this effort, you run the inspection, you run a smart ball inspection or Sahara inspection or whatever, and there's no leak. Like, oh, well, what did I do that for? That was a waste of time. But actually, that's not true. You know, uh, no leaks is actually good information. If you have a, a pipeline network with, with lots of different um, uh, pipelines all over the place, um, you're trying to prioritize them from a risk perspective and from an operation perspective. Um, if you inspect one and there's no leaks, it's, it's still very good information for your asset management system, for your NRW program, and, and, and you, even your capital expenditures. So no leaks is very good information. Um, sometimes it's not good news, depending what the goals are, the inspection are, but sometimes good no leaks is, is great news. That means the pipe is hydraulically functioning the way you want it to. But that doesn't mean there's no problems. Um, and this is where it comes back down to Ian's earlier a uh, slide about, you know, three different solutions for pipeline management, it really comes down to risk. And if you have a, uh, a pipeline that's, that's in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, you, you might not worry about it uh, from, a high, from a risk perspective. But if you've got a, a you know, a 1.5 meter diameter pipe that's, you know, in an urban center, it's nearby, a, you know, a school or, or other, or other uh, uh, residential areas and so on, or it, it is an, uh, a pipe that has no redundancy, that is the single supply to a, to a city, for example, you may want to do further assessment. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about sort of next steps in that here. Um, and here's where the pipe materials do start to matter. And you know, how you manage a steel pipe is different than how you manage a plastic pipe or a concrete pipe. And once you understand the failure modes, we can look at different solutions um, uh, to, help, to help manage these. And again, this is, comes down to the precision. Um, if you've got a, a 100 millimeter pipe, you know, you're probably gonna change the whole, the whole pipeline between valves. But you, if you have a, a 1.5 meter diameter pipe, um, you need to be able to know exactly which piece of pipe is having the problem. So we do find that um, inspection and repair can be only 10% of the replacement cost. So we can be very, uh, with, with targeted, with the right tools and the precision, we can be very targeted uh, with the repairs of the pipe and, and extend the life of these pipes. And there's a range of pipe condition assessment technologies. So I'm not gonna get into the details here, uh, but you know, there's, there's electromagnetic tools, there's ultrasonic tools, there's robotic tools, there's you know, manned entry tools or free swimming tools. There's test pits uh, that you just dig down and, and, and check the pipe at localized location. But you can, you can see, you know, there's, on the top right there, you can see the type of damage you can find with these tools. You can find the actual individual corrosion at a specific location on the, on the pipeline. 
And again, you know, concrete is different than steel and, and, and so on. So they will require slightly different solutions. Um, and yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to invest a lot of money in a smaller diameter of pipe uh, in the middle of nowhere. But if you have a, a big pipe that, uh, you know, is a, is a cooling water for a facility or, or a, a non-redundant pipeline, these are, these are very, very useful. And, you know, leak detection is always a good start. You notice in Ian's three examples there, leak detection was included in each one. So it's always a good start for a condition assessment program. Um, will reduce leakage, but also gives you an idea of where to start. Just a quick case study here. There's a, a high risk pipe, uh, three kilometers is 800 millimeter steel pipe. And again, it's an old pipe. They didn't know what to do with it. Um, and after our inspection program with, this is a, you can see the picture on the left, we're using the, our pipe diver tool. It's a, a free swimming electromagnetic tool. They found in this three kilometer section, only four pieces of pipe had any damage. Um, and so instead of replacing the entire pipeline, which would have cost millions and millions and millions of dollars, they're, all, they're able to actually go down and pinpoint those, those four individual locations. You can see the one of the validations there in the bottom. They can find those individual locations, make a repair and extend the life of that pipe. So it's a huge capex savings. And interestingly in this pipe, there were no leaks. So we did run smart ball ahead of time, no leaks on it. Um, but still there was one pipe there with 60% uh, uh, wall loss. So it will leak eventually. Um, but from a CapEx savings and a sort of infrastructure renewal standpoint, um, a, a huge savings for the customer. Yeah, so I think we're just add on, yeah. on that. So Sorry, can, yeah. can we just go back one? Um, yeah. The bit that I always find interesting is the, the bottom center, because this was a previous repair and the contract to reduce thinner walled pipe than the rest of the pipe. And that hadn't been recorded. So we found 40%, uh, we reported 40% wall loss. And that was because the pipe was thinner than the actual main pipeline itself. So you know, the, contractor had done, <laughs> the contractor had done something hadn't been reported, um, but it was, it was found. So it gathers a lot of accurate, you know, reliable information. Yeah, great. And yeah, and very, very precise enables them to dig this very specific hole on, at that location. So, so yeah, I know we'd sort of want to leave some time for, for, for Q and A. Um, and so I wanted to wrap up with, with, uh, with conclusions here. And I think, you know, you know, there's no perfect leak detection solution to meet every situation. And so, as Ian pointed out earlier, there's, there's lots of solutions, you know, whether it be uh, external tools or, or inline tools or what have you. Um, but I think, you know, from obviously the focus of this, this discussion is on, on the large damage tools and, and, you know, what is the objective of the leak detection pro uh, uh, of, the, of the project? Is, is it to find all leaks or is it, um, just to find the big ones. Is it a high risk pipe? Is it a low risk pipe? You know, you might look at diff applying different, um, different solutions here, depending on the objective. You know, the inline tools do require uh, an extra level of effort. You know, um, they do require inserting a tool into a live pipeline. And sometimes that means adjusting the flow rates. But if you're trying to manage the risk for a large diameter pipe, which is a, a, a high risk asset and, um, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to do this once. It's important to have full confidence you're getting all the leaks. And I think that's where this value discussion comes in that, yeah, there's effort, but you get full confidence you're finding all the leaks. Um, so yeah, really understanding the objective of the leak detection project is, is very important. And, you know, meeting multiple objectives with, with a single solution can, can add to this, this return on investment. So again, coming back to that mapping capability, for example, these tools can do mapping on the pipeline at the same time as a leak detection, uh, the, the tethered system with, with the video as well. So if, you're, if you are going to go through the effort of, of enabling these inspections, yeah, take advantage of the different capabilities that are, that are available. And um, yeah, and there's no silver bullet. So there'll often be, when you're doing a leak detection program, and I know there's lots of people here that are in the, in the leak detection business, uh, and you all know better than me that um, you require a range of solutions and technologies to, to meet the goals for, for a program. So you'll require th that, and that includes correlators, it includes inline tools, it includes lots of other things as well. So um, 
I think it's uh, it's just important to understand how the different pieces fit together and don't forget about your transmission pipelines when you're talking about an NRW program. I think that's probably the that's a message that we've been uh, hammering home for a number of years. Um, I think uh, uh, yeah, the focus is typically on distribution systems and DMAs and so on, but those big pipes that are supplying water uh, have a have a huge impact. Um, have a huge impact on, on, on NRW. So, so I think with that, we've got about 15 minutes left for questions, which I think is where we wanted to be. And uh, there's a few of them coming in. You know, I don't know if you've been tracking any of the questions. Or Stuart, do you want, do you want yeah. to uh, sort of moderate that, Stuart, or do you want us to, uh, to answer as we go here? No, if, if, you, if you can just go on ahead, Mike, and uh, there's several questions coming. If you can just go on and read the question and answer them as, uh, as you go on, because you've probably got private questions as well. That have been entered, yes. so uh, I'll, I'll let you continue. Okay. Okay. Mike, you just want to go to the last slide? Um, oh, because sorry. one of the questions. There we go. The nope. Thank you slide, um, the most important one. Thank you, yes. Um, so one of the questions we've had is, can we, can the participants get a copy of the presentation? Uh, yes, they can. If they want to email to me, uh, and that's why I asked Mike to show the last slide, there's my email address. If you send me the request, I will send it back to you as a, as a, as a PDF. Um, one question, uh, how do we disinfect the Sahara system? Uh, the same applies to SmartBall. Simple one for that one is we make up a disinfection solution uh, based upon the legal requirements of the local utility and we spray all the equipment uh, before it's inserted and for the Sahara specifically, we actually, the drum of the fiber optic cable sits in that solution. So as it rolls out, it's being disinfected. Um, yeah, great, one for thanks. you, and Mike. I, what? I would just, I would just add, uh, Ian, that uh, we can adapt the disinfection uh, program to each individual region because they're all a little bit different. So happy to use the local requirements and any local um, sort of parts per million requirements as they are. Uh, one more for you, I think, Mike. What is the false alarm rate? Yeah, um, that's a good question. We, we get that question a lot about how do you guarantee we, we find everything. Um, you know, uh, uh, I think we obviously are very confident with it, but every inspection we'll run, we will include a, 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 a simulated leak. So we'll actually crack open an a air valve or uh, very often people will try to do it uh, quietly or try to hide the hide that to test the system you know we are uh, i don't know how we would, we would know if we're missing anything to be honest um that's the thing uh, nothing really to compare it to but you know again the sen the sensor is inside the pipe and 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 very uh, very sensitive so you know detecting the leak you know i don't i don't think we will miss anything um they're they're locating the leak is the hardest part with um so locating is is the hard part and and we do rely especially with smartball on on accurate pipeline information to enable the 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 leak location so if we don't know where the pipeline is going that can cause some some challenges in location but that's when we use a gyroscope and some of the other capabilities in the in the tool to to help us with the with the accurate locations so i would say our false alarm rate is uh very 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 low with respect to uh hearing leaks I, yeah i think it's, yeah, it's not a monitoring system. This is, we are doing single inspections. We're not doing, we're not monitoring. So anyway, go ahead, Ian, sorry. So the next question is a bit of a long one um, from down in Sydney. So good day. Where we've have, we have 3000 kilometers of pipes bigger than 375 mil in Sydney, largely cast iron. We have successfully used Sahara and Smartboard 10 years ago. Good to hear so. The difficulty for the time was to build a business case uh, for proactive leak detection using these tools, um, but at, at the time it didn't stack up. Recent, recent anecdotes and research say that leak eventuates into over time, it does, into main breaks, which makes it easy. I was wondering if a tethered tool could measure leaks, transients, 
assess pipe conditions available or upcoming as a one-stop solution for larger mains? Yeah, the, that's the silver bullet, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah, we have done some work even more recently in Sydney, I think even last year, uh, 18 months ago with, with Smartball. Um, um, and yeah, indeed, the leak before burst concept, which is uh, a lot of research done in Australia there to support that, and it's specifically on the cast iron pipe. So um, yeah, indeed, it, it definitely changes the business case. Um, you, you're right. So, um, and you know, uh, I guess a couple of things I'll say about the tools. First of all, um, we are looking at other other capabilities on 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 Sahara with respect to um, with respect to uh, pipe condition, um, and there are other tools out there, uh, especially on the smaller diameter pipes. But for the big pipes, as far as I know, um, you know, there's nothing really quite like that for Sahara. But you know that's when the the pipe diver tool comes in and and you know there's other transient monitoring capabilities such as surge view and others that uh, that you know it's a, they're already existing in, in australia as well so you know surge view does a great job of monitoring transients you know anytime we're running a pipe diver uh tool for example um like that one we showed in europe there we would run the smart ball ahead of time so you know we that's it's, it's a toolbox approach. Uh, it would be nice to do everything in one shot, but what we find is, um, you know, it's better to monitor for those transients over time because they do change. Um, you know, we want to monitor for transients over weeks or months. Um, whereas, you know, the, the pipe uh, inspection itself is more of a snapshot. So it's, it'd be nice to cover everything at once, but we actually find that the separate tools, um, they complement each other well and, and um, as Ian showed there on the three different levels of, of effort, uh, that, that third level of effort where you're doing the design check, the, the, the leak detection and the transient monitoring and the pipe wall assessment and the remaining useful life, you can do that. And, but you don't have to do that for every pipe in your system. And I think that's the other benefit of having the different tools is you might do transients everywhere, for example, and monitor your whole network for transients for it's very valuable, but you might only do the, the pipe assessment on the high risk pipe. So it does allow you for a bit more uh, but yeah, if you'd like to chat more about that, uh, please, please contact me. We can discuss further. Go, go ahead, Ian. What's next? Okay, next question. Can Sahara detect air pockets in pipes? Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. And, yes. And, and, and from the same person... Uh, and we all knew this was coming. Could we give a general figure about the cost uh, for the different solutions we've talked about in comparison to other leak detection methods? And I think um, I'll probably, I'm, I'm seeing the next question as well, which is it recommended for a bulk water utility to buy the equipment or, or just hire their services? And I think um, the cost, uh, it, frankly, it, it ranges. And um, we do have different business models as well. Um, in Europe, we're typically uh, flying around and, and providing the services directly ourselves um, for individual inspections. Um, but you know, we've very successfully, uh, you know, Manilad is a, is a proud user, for example, of, of Sahara. We've, we've sold Sahara to Manilad and they've been very successful running the tool themselves uh, for many years. Um, and, and so there are examples like that. And we also often license the equipment. And so we can license the equipment and provide training. So it's a bit of a bit of a hybrid. So the cost uh, definitely, definitely changes. But look, uh, it, it is more expensive comparing to other leak detection methods, like it's more expensive than a, than a correlator. Uh, there's no, there's no question about that. Uh, it's not the cheapest uh, leak detection solution out there. But uh, that's why you don't do it everywhere. You're, you can be selective on your high value, high risk uh, pipeline assets. So yeah, it's it's um, but we do have um, we do recognize that the the cost needs to be different everywhere depending on the environment. So yeah, please get in touch with us and we can uh, we can look at the most cost effective way of of delivering the uh, the service in, in wherever you are. And I also we also uh, we go back to the IWA table that different pipe diameters require different solutions, different levels of effort. So it's you know it has a role. Uh, it has to be in the right right place at the right time. Um, 
So next one, Mike, how to find small leaks in insulated pipes, i.e. chilled water. Uh, I can take that one. Um, yeah. We're inside the pipe. So we're detecting the, the noise from inside. So the pipe material, any coatings, it doesn't impact on the ability of our solutions to detect the, the noises, that, which could be the leaks or, or the air pockets. But it's great. We I don't know if we've done Next a lot one. of chilled water. Sorry, I don't know if we've done a lot of chilled water pipes, Ian, but we've done a lot of district heating pipes in, in northern Europe. And it, the insulated pipe is quite interesting because where the pipe is leaking, the water often runs down the insulation and will show itself later. So that inline tool is super important because you'll find the source of the leak rather than where it's coming out. And I think it would be the same for the chilled water pipe. Uh, next question, is is it applicable for pressurized sewer lines? Uh, the answer is yes, it has to be pressurized uh, for the acoustic. Um, yeah, and a great, it, then, we don't, uh, I, I, I'd say, uh, sorry to interrupt, but rising mains and those pressurized sewer lines, we don't find a lot of leaks, to be honest with you. It's very rare to have a leak on a, on a sewer, a pressurized sewer pipe, but we get a lot of gas pockets and you can find those gas pockets, which are really critical on a sewer pipe where the hydrogen sulfide is gathered. So we can find those, those gas pockets, very common and very, the smart ball in particular is used extensively on, on rising mains. And, and the last one at the moment, although we do have six minutes left, um, can it give images inside the pipe? The Sahara, yes, it has a camera on the front uh, with the acoustic, the smart ball doesn't have a camera. So if you wanted a, a camera, in, a leak detection inspection with a camera, then the Sahara is the tool uh, to go with. And the pipe diver that Mike mentioned briefly at the end for your corrosion and broken wires, we do actually run that with cameras pointing backwards. So that does give you a video image during the survey of the pipeline as well. Great. And, uh... I thought I actually had one of these in my cupboard behind me in my home office, so I should have pulled it out earlier, but this is what smart ball actually looks like in case you haven't seen one before. Um, there's a core, uh, aluminum core inside. Oh, I've got one of these too. Just since we've got a bit of time left. So the aluminum, it's about the size of a tennis ball. And inside this core is batteries and all the, all the, all the sensors and so on. And this core goes inside the smart ball and we push it, inside the pipeline as it goes in it. Again, you can see videos online and uh, uh, and also, you know, feel free to ask us any more questions, but this is the real thing. And this uh, foam, we use this size foam for most of our inspections. If the pipe is, you know, 700 millimeters or two meters in diameter, we use the same tool here. So if you want to uh, discuss anything else about it, just let us know. That was the last question so far, Mike. Good. So I don't know, Stuart, we've got five minutes left. Anything else we need to let's say any other questions? Or just thank everybody for their for their time and um, you know, please get in touch if you have any questions. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ian. Uh, great webinar. Really, really appreciative. Uh, like we said, this this will go live onto our YouTube channel and people will be getting the link uh, in this Friday's email. Uh, you, you've got one more question come in, Mike, which yeah. is what about vertical pipelines? Is it possible? Is yeah, good passes? question. And I, I think the you know, short answer is yes. The, um, the, the, the smart ball is designed to be, to be rolling. So we intentionally make it so it just rolls in the bottom of the pipe. Let's go and get it on my, on my screen here. So it would roll on the bottom of the pipe. But when it will come to a, a vertical section, if there's enough flow, you do need sufficient flow, but that could be as low as, you know, even 0 0.5 meters a second um, to go up a vertical section. So it does depend a little bit on the diameter and the flow rate, but yes, very often we're going um, up vertical, vertical sections. Um, so let us know what your, uh, please let us know what the pipeline, some details of the pipeline and, and we're happy to, uh, happy to discuss details. So thanks everyone for joining. It's good to see um, some familiar faces and familiar names and uh, appreciate everyone's time in different parts of the, parts of the world. And 
Uh, and again, I think thank the IWA and the and the water loss uh, specialist group here. I think this is a great program, a very informative and great way to spread the knowledge of the very different solutions across industry. So I think it uh, it takes lots of different tools to uh, to to reduce to reduce the water loss and and keep it up, Stuart. Good stuff. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, thanks, Ian. Thanks, Mike, for everything. Okay. Thank you.